hello hello and welcome to my channel my name is Kat I am the nurse flipper and this channel is all about reselling I show thrift videos I show hauls I do shop with me and I do what sold which is what I started my channel on and that is what I'm going to show you today we have nine hundred and seventy six dollars going out on eBay and we also have over a hundred dollars going out over on Poshmark Mercari Facebook so the amazing thing today is we have over a sixty dollar average sales price that is a major major goal for me and my business overall so we are only packing like 20 items for that over a thousand dollars in sales super exciting so a lot of really high profit items in this video so i can't wait to show you so let's go All right, so this first item I actually only paid $1 for at a garage sale. And it was an antiques dealer that does a lot of online estate auctions. So to get something from them for a dollar that is worth so much was absolutely amazing. So the first thing is this little Dotson. And this figurine is Royal Dalton. I'm gonna see if the camera can pick it up there. so it is marked here on the foot i think that's as close as i'm going to be able to get it and it does say royal dalton it also is numbered up here on the front paw and i paid a dollar and this guy sold for fifty dollars plus the buyer paid 17 in shipping meaning it is going international so fifty dollars for a little figurine watch out for them when you're at yard sales also in the thrifts because a lot of people are not going to look close enough or research the bottom of that foot to know that it is worth that much. So this will be over a $40 profit sold in about five months. Up next is this Mickey Mouse hand. So this is a toothbrush holder. This is from Disney China. So it is not anything overly impressive i only paid two dollars for this at the thrift store and it sold for twenty dollars plus the buyer paid ten in shipping this is going to be two pounds i'm assuming it's probably going to the west coast and i do calculated shipping so if somebody in florida had bought it the shipping probably would have only been about eight dollars but because it is going to the other coast they are paying ten making that about a fifteen dollar profit and that's holding about three months this is this beautiful purse this is from miss kathy's buyout it is not branded it does have a little generic name here and it says it was made in hong kong this i think was like a little local maybe seamstress shop that like applied their own tags but this has got really pretty mother of pearl inlay up here and i did put that in my title this one i am only a few dollars in and it sold for 30 dollars plus the buyer paid 11 in shipping making it close to a 23 dollar profit so i have been looking a lot more at these older branded purses there we go and this one just has some amazing sequins and beadwork and if you can find them cheap they are able to be keyworded pretty easily so i would definitely pick them up and i am happy with that sale next is this little disney beanie she is a Minnie mouse birthstone so she is still new with her tags some of the black was coming off so hopefully that buyer is okay with that it wasn't off this one it was actually off of another one so i paid about two dollars for her i actually bought the thrift store out of these disney beanies so if they are smaller thrift stores and they have a whole bin of something you think is profitable don't be scared to ask them if they're willing to sell them all and i offered them 150 for all i ended up about a dollar in and this one will be about a seven dollar profit and the buyer did pay four dollars and 95 cent for shipping and sold in about three months i have been in the profit on those beanies some of those disney beanies are pretty rare and pretty profitable up next and this is a really profitable piece i did pay about 30 dollars for this and i have shown you guys this pattern before but do not forget it and if you're new 
make sure you remember it. So this is Linux The Village and this platter is from 2010 so it is not vintage but this pattern is very very much sought after. Here is your marking. And the spice rack for this goes for over $300 and I picked one up. I picked this platter up actually before the spice rack. I've had this for about eight months. I paid 30 and it sold for $131 plus the buyer paid 20 in shipping and they got another Linux Village piece I'm going to show you and I believe these are my last two pieces. Dale Flippin' Fiasco actually saw the spice rack for this at an antique mall and it was priced at $225 but it would sell for $400 and that would be a $200 profit. I did not get it but if you see the spice rack with the little houses even if you just see the little houses by themselves they sell very very well so do not forget Linux the Village because this pattern is money. Next, and this was the last piece, this is also Linux The Village. So you see those little houses, you can see that floral print, and they are all marked. So this one is from 2001. So this one's actually a little older, but this one sold for $29.99. I paid about $10, so this will be close to a $15 profit. I will tell you I got these in lots, and I got them from an online auction of somebody who was downsizing. So keep an eye out for that pattern. We ran across it at the antique mall. I've ran across it in auctions and I found it at garage sales. So it is out there and it is very, very well sought after. Up next is a Kachina. So my Kachina collection dwindles. Um, this one is a snake charmer or snake dancer, sorry. And this one is on this big, big wooden block. And he is signed, I will show you there. And I paid about $20 for him and a lot. And this guy sold for $149.99 plus 23 in shipping. And he sold in about three months. So I do, you can actually see my Kachina shelf up there. I still have probably about 15. So I got to sell a few more before I decide to start hunting some more. I love Kachina dolls. I love Hopi. I love Navajo. And I really love anything Native American. So that guy was over $100 profit. Sorry, I got so excited. I forgot to say that. Up next, this is a little Mickey Mouse pocket watch. So this pocket watch, trying to see, it actually is not branded. So it's really hard to see because it's kind of got some fuzzies there. But this one I got in Miss Linda's buyout. I paid about $5 and this one sold for $80 plus shipping. The buyer paid $8.25. Again, this is light, but I put it as priority because I want that $100 in insurance in case it gets lost. I do not want to be out $80 and that will be about a $70 profit. And I will tell you it was not working. I did not put a new battery in. I did not want to deal with it. So I just sold it as is. And it's kind of funny. So the buyer actually messaged me and apologized because they sent me an offer for $8. It was listed a little over $100. And but they wrote, would you take $80? And I realized that they had made a typo. So I will tell you guys, this is one of the times where if I had had auto decline set up, or under you know sixty dollars or whatever my minimum that I was willing to take I would have never seen that eight dollar offer that was actually a typo by my buyer and they apologized they were actually really embarrassed and I told them no no I understood that you wanted to offer 80 so I countered them at 80 and they accepted and they paid right away but if I had had that auto decline feature on that typo by that buyer could have lost that sale so I do not do a minimum auto denial on my offers. I would rather handle them myself. And sometimes if I've had something six months or a year, I might be willing to take a lot less than I would initially when I list it. So I found some stuff that when I used auto decline, and I did used to do that, but when I used that, I had put an offer that I had ended up lowering the price lower than what I initially said to auto decline. So I do not do that anymore. I add best offer to all of my listings. That way I can determine with how long I've had an item, whether or not that offer is a fair one for me at that point.
and I did pay five dollars for that watch in Miss Linda's buyout so it is about a seventy dollar profit this is another thing from Miss Linda's another thing for you guys to really watch out for at garage sales thrift stores estate sales these are teeny tiny and they are actually Hagen Renickers there is a deer there is one cute little bunny and there is another cute little bunny so these three guys sold for $15.93. I'm just a couple dollars in. They will be about a $10 profit. And they sold in less than two months. Up next is this basket. So I do look at baskets when I'm out. This one's almost like a, well, it's got my hair. It's like a pine straw woven basket. And it does have the lid here. Whoa. At least it's just a basket, right? Um, it does have a lid and I am only a couple dollars into that in an online auction lot sold for $15.93 plus the buyer paid shipping took about four months to sell but it will be about a $12 profit and doesn't break doesn't break um, buyer paid 12 in shipping because I do think it will be over. I would like to take just a moment to say I really appreciate you watching me it really does mean a lot Take a second, hit that thumbs up, leave me a comment below to let me know what you think. And subscribe if you have not subscribed. I really do appreciate you watching. So let's get back to the video. Next are these Mark Fisher high heeled shoes. Um, they are brand new. They are from a QVC palette. They are kind of a suede. I have a bunch of these. So if you're a big heel wearer, um, $6.43. And I will tell you guys, I got those on a QVC palette. I've had them over two years and $6 is probably about what I paid. So that is a complete wash. There is no profit there. And I get asked all the time, where should I buy palettes? What should I do? I will tell you, I did start out this go round. I've sold off and on for over 20 years, but this go round, I did start off doing palettes and it's really exciting to get palettes and not know what's on it. And you can get, you know, you're hoping for like some big ticket item but the reality of palettes is they're a lot of work and you're gonna get stuff that won't sell. So on that QVC palette, I had a ton of brands and stuff that sold really fast. I did get in the profit fast, but I still have a lot of stuff that's still hanging around from over two years ago sitting here. So I personally choose not to do palettes. The only time I really do palettes now is if I see a multi-quantity one item on a high bid, I will do it, but I do not do the returns palettes or overstock anymore just because I learned you're going to get some good stuff, but you're also going to get a lot of stuff that will not sell and will sit there and might be broken or missing parts and you don't know. And you could sell that item and you get a return because it was missing something that you didn't know was supposed to be there. So that is my advice as far as palettes. I just don't think it as far as time and money spent is a profitable thing to do. But to each their own. Some do very, very well with palettes. It is just not something that I personally think is a, the right business plan for me. Up next, and I found this while I was in Pennsylvania. It sold really fast within two days. So I found this at an antique mall. And I will tell you, antique malls are a lot harder to source out for reselling because most of your sellers are going to know what they have. It's going to be priced accordingly. And they're priced for collectors. They're not priced for resellers. Antique malls are not there for resellers. They are there for collectors. But found this for 15 It had a discount. So I actually paid $12. It sold in less than two days for $76.49. This is over a $60 profit right here and it sold really fast. I am a big cloisonne fan. This one had butterflies, it had flowers, beautiful green enamel back and it sold really really fast so keep your eye out for cloisonne. A lot of it is marked up but some of it is not and actually I just won two cloisonne vases that are absolutely amazing and with them I bought a lot of jewelry and when I say a lot I mean like $800 worth of jewelry so when I went up to Pennsylvania I went to Jocelyn's shop and there was all this jewelry and I'm like where are you where are you getting the jewelry and she's like auctions well yeah 
so I decided that I would look for some jewelry some of you have asked for me to do like a jewelry photography video and I miss doing jewelry I haven't really done much jewelry in about two years I did it a lot well about a year and a half ago I did a ton of jewelry and I like jewelry it's small it's pretty easy to photograph it's really easy to ship and the profits can be great so I bought I believe close to 15 amazing vintage and antique jewelry lots from a online hybrid auction in Alabama if you're not familiar using hybrid I will pop a link up there to my video walking you through step by step of how to use hybrid and yeah I'm really excited to get this jewelry because I think I'm gonna have a lot of good pieces there was a lot of sterling I will tell you there were two big lots that I backed down on and one of them went over $300 the other one went over 500 and with me not having done jewelry lately I just was not comfortable putting out that much on one lot and I had to let them go it was really really hard though because there were some amazing pieces in this estate up next is this Oraton purse. You can see it does have its original dust bag and it honestly does not look like it was really ever used. Oraton again is your brand name. I will tell you I got this at a garage sale. I paid five dollars for this. Five bucks and it I didn't know the brand and this lady had a whole table full of coach and she said five dollars each. This was while I was up in Cincinnati, Ohio. And I saw that one. I saw it was in the dust bag. I'm like, you know what? It's five bucks. If it has a dust bag, it's probably expensive. So I picked it up. It took about four months to sell three to four months. It's over $45.49 plus the buyer paid $24 in shipping. It is going international and it is going to be about a $35 profit. So why I grabbed it without looking it up, two of us were there. There was me. There was another lady. There was a table full of coach and it was like this you know you're like grabbing when this lady says they're only five dollars and i'm like i i had to grab it i didn't have time to leave it sitting there to look it up because if i did that lady would have took it so i'm glad i got it i now know the brand orton and it is a good profit speaking of jewelry i sold this vintage brooch very blingy there let's see if we can get it without some bright light there you go really really pretty piece it is unbranded and this one I paid about eight dollars for in an online auction this just happened to be an online auction that I bought a ton of glass work at but I saw they had some jewelry so I got picked up these brooches this one sold for twenty dollars plus the buyer paid five in shipping and for these I do put them into jewelry boxes and then I'll put it into a little padded envelope and that will be about a ten dollar profit and next this camera is a canon it is 60 zoom i got this for one dollar one dollar one dollar into 44.99 overnight picked this up while i was in pennsylvania it was in some banana boxes on the ground everything was a dollar and this is a quick 40 dollar profit sold super fast check your film cameras that is an old film camera and a lot of them are still valuable especially if you can find them for a dollar all right this is the last thing on ebay and then i'm going to show you what sold on the other platforms and there's some pretty interesting stuff this is actually an old newspaper clipping on the n9637 and this plane it's pretty cool the guy that bought this said he is actually the specialist in the u.s for this plane so pretty cool now i will tell you this accidentally sold with free shipping so i'm probably i'm making like a dollar it should have been five dollars plus shipping i would have made like three but whatever it's really cool that this guy worked on these planes and he is one of the specialists on them so this one will be about a dollar profit but i am happy that it is going i've had it about six months right. oh first is this really cool playbill this is lena horn and this one sold over on poshmark for eight dollars i'm less than a dollar in this will be about a six dollar profit and you're gonna see here and i probably need to do another updated what sold on poshmark video poshmark sells not just clothes like i sell a lot of my vintage glass collectibles sold that playbill you're gonna see something really big i sold on poshmark here as well so definitely Think about cross-posting. All of the stuff you're seeing now is from 
other platforms and I use lists perfectly. If you haven't tried that and you want to try cross posting, whether like Etsy is your main platform, eBay, whatever your main platform is, list perfectly makes it really easy to put those listings on to other sites. And somebody asked me and I do post everything I post goes to eBay, Poshmark, Mercari and Facebook. So we have a wide variety of buyers and it amazes me how fast some stuff sells on one platform versus another. Next is a Mercari sale. So this I got while I was on vacation. It is the Pledge of Allegiance. It has it written around the edges there and it has the eagle. And this one sold for $16 over on Mercari. I paid $3 for this at the thrift store while I was in, I believe, Savannah, Georgia, and it will be about a $12 profit. And then this one is Facebook. I did pick this up while I was in Pennsylvania. I paid less than a dollar. It's a little cute blue glass individual salt seller and it will be about an $8 profit over on Facebook. And I absolutely love this and I love stuff like this. This is a circle on. This was made in Spain and it sold for $17 over on Mercari and it is marked so you would be able to look it up and it is 3D. I'm not sure if you guys can see there. This is not one dimensional. It is pretty cool little plate and will be about a $14 profit for me. I paid a dollar at the thrift store. And then the other camera I picked up for a dollar. This is a Pentax IQ Zoom and I paid a dollar and this one sold for $34 over on Facebook in less than a day as well. So a $30 profit. So those two cameras made me $70 in less than 12 hours after listing and I didn't even spend that much at the market that day. So that was pretty amazing. Last is this giant thing. This is a wicker. Oh. <laughs> it's a little wicker trunk. I had to set that down. I was pretty heavy. So that wicker trunk sold for $50 over on Poshmark. I actually only paid a few dollars for it in an online auction, making it about a $40 profit. That is going to be everything. I want to remind you guys, do not forget tomorrow night, I will be live with Jocelyn Crazy Lamp Lady, who I spent actually last weekend with met her it was absolutely amazing if you haven't seen the videos definitely check them out of us going treasure hunting together and selena the vintage bombshell i am so excited to have selena on with me it is her first live so you guys have to come and welcome her and we will have an absolutely amazing time tomorrow night at 8 p.m eastern standard time and already scheduled out you guys go over to primetime treasure hunter dom's channel I am going to be in a thrift battle with Tommy Buffalo Picker on Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So come out, show your support, help me out. I won my last one. This is like the second um, tier of it. So it will be a fun time over at Primetime Treasure Hunter Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope you had a great weekend. I hope you had some really amazing sales and I will see you tomorrow. Bye guys. So last night, Dalton and I had a big scare. I was sitting in the shed. I was sitting probably like right in there. And I kept hearing a crack. And if you live in Florida, you know the whole crack sounds. And I heard a big one and I grabbed Dalton and ran. And if you see up here, this branch cracked, snapped off. It did hit the shed. Luckily, I do not see any damage to the shed, but it hit it and I heard it crack and I heard it coming down. You can see exactly how high that truly is. And we are lucky it fell this way, but if you see here, the break and again, luckily no damage. I would say this is probably, the cats are out here inspecting it. This is probably a good I don't know, at least 40 foot branch that came down and we were very lucky it missed the shed, but it was terrifying. I heard it crack, I heard it snap and grabbed Dalton and ran and yeah, but everybody is okay.